Okay, so to download this presentation, go to kjvco.de slash Jesus name PDF. That'll take you to the PDF where you can download this for free. I want to go full screen and it should let me go right and left with my arrow keys. And the good thing about that is that if you have one of those presentation clickers, uh, it'll work. Uh, I, I was able to use one myself to go through the presentation one slide at a time. Okay, so it also has the, uh, the, the links here directly on the PDF so that everybody else can access it if they would like. Um, so let's just go through this real quick. So first I have uh, the verses uh, from, about Jesus' name being above every name from Philippians, as well as uh, Jesus, um, or the, Jesus claiming that the Father's word is the scriptures and that they bear witness of him. So you can kind of go through that and see that for yourself. But here's where I'm assuming most people are going to start with the, the presentation, especially if you're trying to save some time. How many times does Jesus show up in the Bible? And it's a great way to open up a conversation because not many people know that. <laughs> not many people know how many times Jesus shows up in the Bible because it's a lot. Um, there might be some myths floating around. There might be some uh, general ideas. I've heard, I've actually heard once before that Jesus shows up 888 times in the Bible, uh, which is not true. <laughs> it's actually more more incredible than that. But um, uh, Jesus, how many times does his name show up in the Bible? Now with computers, we do know. So this is something you can ask your teacher, your friend, your family member, um, somebody who's a stranger that you just met. How many times does Jesus show up in the Bible? Do you know? And most people will not know that. And with this presentation, you'll be able to share that with them and how incredible it is. So basically, if we were to count, this is just showing us counting one by one. Matthew 1.1 1, 1 is the first mention of Jesus. And then Matthew 1.16, there he shows up again. So every single time we see the name Jesus show up in the Bible, how many times would it be until we get to the very last one, Revelation 22.21? So here's the last verse of the Bible with the last mention of Jesus and our question marks, because we want to know how many times does Jesus show up in the Bible? Now the answer is, it depends, because we have these things called anti-mentions or look-alike mentions, where if we read here in Colossians 4.11, it says, And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers. This is Paul's fellow worker, a guy named Justice, who also goes by Jesus. So this is not talking about Jesus Christ. So do we include this mention of Jesus in the total count, or do we exclude it? So that's what we do. We, we separate it. We say, okay, in the raw count on the left side, in the purple, we're going to include that mention of Jesus because we, there could be some significance there because God has placed somebody's name there with the name of Jesus, even though it's not referring to Jesus Christ. But we also want to look at it from, from a purified point of view where we're going to have a pure count where we're only looking at Jesus Christ with the 980 on the right side. So the difference between the top and the bottom rows is that the top row includes possessive mentions with the apostrophe at the end of it. So um, we would we have 10 mentions of possessive Jesus and then 10, uh, 970 uh, with just standard Jesus. Um, again, there could be significance to both of those, so we just kind of separate it. But for this presentation, we're only going to be looking at patterns and and significance uh, things that are related to the 980 count, since that's the most prominent one. That's the one where you would kind of expect to find the most significance because it's referring directly to Jesus Christ and it's every single mention of Jesus in the Bible. So here is a screenshot from King James Pure Bible Search, which is the best software out there for verifying all this, where we have Jesus showing up 980 times after we exclude. So down here is the exclude um, toggle. When we check that uh, in Pure Bible Search, we're able to remove all those anti mentions. So what we're left with is here's the raw count of 983, and then the the count that we now have is 980. Okay, so with the pure count, we get 980 mentions of Jesus. Now, is that interesting? 
Yes, that's very interesting because 980 equals 490 plus 490. Now, what does 490 equal? 490 equals 70 times 7, which is the exact equation that proceeded out of the mouth of Jesus Christ when he was talking to Peter about forgiveness of sins. So this number represents complete forgiveness of sins. In fact, let's just read it. It says in Matthew 18, 21, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. So this equation represents complete forgiveness of sins. And Jesus' name shows up seventy times seven times 2, or 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7 times in the entire Bible. So, Jesus, His name means Jehovah's salvation. He came to save us from our sins, to forgive our sins with His blood. And that's how many times His name shows up. Okay? Now, it gets way more interesting. And mathematically, it becomes impossible to wrap your head around. Because in odd books, which basically means in every other book, so starting with Matthew, skipping over Mark to Luke, skipping over John to Acts, so if we look at all the odd books, we're going to find 70 times 7 mentions of Jesus in those books. Which means we're going to find 70 times 7 mentions of Jesus in the even books as well. So when you skip over every other book in the Bible, you get exactly 70 times 7 mentions of Jesus. Now, if you think about it, statistically, that seems kind of normal, especially if you have the same amount of words in odd and even books, because you're going to roughly find the same amount of, of mentions in each one, because you basically have two, you're separating two categories to say, okay, here's the odd books have 100,000 words. How many times is Jesus mentioned? 490? Okay. Here's the even books, 100,000 words approximately, and we have 490 mentions of Jesus. But that's not the case. That's not the case at all, which is what makes the which is what makes this miraculous. And by the way, here's the screenshot proof. Um, along with a, a link down here, if you want to directly go to kjvcode.com and look at this pattern, download this screenshot, download the search file so you can look at it for yourself on your own computer. All you need is Peer Bible Search installed, which is free, and you can verify all this for yourself. So here's the even books where you can see here. Mark, John, Romans, Second Corinthians, Ephesians, and and here is where we run into our anomaly because look in the odd books. There's 166 chapters. Look in the even books. There's only 94 chapters. That's a pretty big difference. That's a 72 chapter difference. There's 72 more chapters. I mean, think of how many chapters that is in a Bible. I mean, the book of the, the book of Matthew is 28 chapters. The book of Luke, I mean, the book of Mark has 16. The book of Luke has 24. The book of John has 21. I mean, the you do, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and part of John, that's how many chapters, that's how big of a difference it is from odd books to even books. There is way more words in odd books. In fact, down here it says there's 117,753 words in odd books. And in the even books, there's 62,629. So there's almost double the amount, because double of, of 60,000 would be 120,000. So there's almost double the amount of words in odd books than even books. And in fact, this isn't on the presentation, but in the odd books, Jesus is mentioned in 50 more chapters than in even books. Yet, he shows up 70 times 7 times in each of them. So this is a chart that shows you how many words are in the odd books versus how many words are in the even books to give you a visual of the difference. But Jesus shows up 70 times, 7 times in both. Now this becomes abundantly bizarre. And in Luke chapter 5 it says, We have seen strange things today after they witnessed Jesus do a miracle. Uh, I, would, I would say this is a strange thing. 
Look at all these words and how lopsided the chart is uh, when it comes to odd books in the blue versus even books in the yellow. For example, the word witch, W-H-I-C-H, -H, not the evil witch who's laughing, but the, you know, the normal word witch, you have 1,081 mentions of witch in odd books and 473 in even books. So there's more than double the amount of mentions in odd books. The word his, 941 mentions in odd books, but only 496 in even books. There is a massive difference that is completely lopsided, as you would expect it to be, uh, with all these heavily mentioned words. But when you get to Jesus, he's just perfectly sitting there at 490, 70 times 7, with the exact number that he spoke. So, I mean, does that happen by chance? Is that, is that just, okay, I mean, let's just pretend that he didn't say that number. That's still wild. That's still crazy. But the fact that he said that number in the scriptures to represent complete forgiveness of sins. So, once you go through the data, you'll realize no other heavily mentioned word in the New Testament has that perfectly balanced, has any type of balance, let alone a number that Jesus spoke. They don't have any balance at all if it's a heavily mentioned word. Now, obviously, once you get to the smaller mentioned words, you're going to find the balance more often. If you have a word mentioned two times in the New Testament, you're obviously going to find lots of those words where it's mentioned once in an even book and once in an odd book. And then, I mean, anything, it's, it's not like a graph where it's, it's just going to be like exponential. When you get to heavily mentioned words, that balance should not happen, especially with the only mathematical multiplication equation that Jesus ever spoke. Okay, so here's a kind of a wider, more expanded view um, where we, last time we were, we were looking at the word which at the very end of the graph, here it expands all the way out to, where, to the word that. <clears throat> um, so you can see that uh, this, this type of lopsidedness, it goes all the way um, in throughout all these heavily mentioned words. So obviously there's going to be a few outliers. There's going to be a few that are closer um, to one, you know, closer in, and there's going to be ones that are a little bit further out. But you can see the general direction, the general pattern of how you would expect the words to show up. Okay, so now this is just actual data of how many times he's actually mentioned in each book. <clears throat> so for example, in John, kind of interesting, John is the fourth book. And 256 is 4 to the 4th power. And uh, Jesus, so Jesus is mentioned 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times in the 4th book. And I believe, you might have to check me on this, I believe he's mentioned 4 times 4 times in the last chapter of John. But anyways, just kind of interesting. So this is the actual data though. Um, and it reminds me a lot of the manna when the children of Israel were gathering the manna in the wilderness. Um, because somebody has asked me before, like, what does this mean? Like, why would it be every other book? And it, it heavily reminds me of this. So at Exodus 16, 17 to 18, it says, And the children of Israel did so and gathered, talking about gathering manna, some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And... Who is Jesus? Jesus says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So Jesus, we see his name perfectly showing up in the scriptures. No more, no less than 70 times 7 mentions when you look in that balance. And we look at, <laughs> I mean... Man, the, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And there's a few times where Jesus speaks, of, speaks his own name. Uh, Revelation 22, 16 and John 17, uh, he says his own name. I think there's one other place as well. Um, so he is directly contributing to this pattern. So maybe it's a lucky coincidence. And obviously he wrote the whole Bible. Obviously he is God in the flesh. So he, <laughs> he, did, he is the author of this pattern. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a chance. Maybe this just happened by accident.
And that's why we have the rest of the presentation. Because not only is Jesus' name so perfectly uh, structured in the Bible by itself, when you look at it as our first example, in combination with the word Christ, then you see something that truly boggles the mind and cannot be passed off as random chance anymore. So when we see Jesus and Christ show up in the Bible and we're looking at the pure mentions, so you see on the bottom here, we have 980 for Jesus. That's how it's going to be for the entire presentation. We're only looking at patterns with 980 for Jesus. And when we look at Christ, mentions that we're referring directly to Jesus Christ, and then Christians, which is a follower of Christ. You see his name Christ is in the word Christian. That's what a Christian is. It's named after Christ. All of the total mentions give you a total of 1,554 mentions in the Bible, which is 777 plus 777, which gives you an average of 777 mentions of each because there's you have Jesus and Christ, so you get an average of 777 for each one. Now, in case you uh, were not aware of this, seven is the number of perfection to God in the Bible. Just start reading from the book of Genesis and you'll quickly find that out. He, on the seventh day, he rests and he sanctifies that seventh day. He, it is holy. And all the way throughout the scriptures, uh, the very first word out of his mouth, the very first number, I mean, is, is seven, sevenfold when he's talking to Cain. <clears throat> um, so even when, not many people have realized this, but in the flood of Noah, if you, if you are familiar with, the, with Noah, in the flood of Noah, Noah's dad, his father, was named Lamech. And everybody before the flood, so starting with Adam and then Seth and Enos and everybody who lived throughout the you know, pre-flood time period, all of them lived to be 900 plus years old. There was a one guy who lived to be like 890 something, 892. Everybody else in their 900s before they die, right? Uh, Enoch obviously was translated. He never died, but everybody who died died in their 900s. The closest, the farthest one out was 892. The anomaly, the outlier, the guy who wasn't like the rest, even Noah himself lived to be 950 years old. The outlier, the anomaly, was Noah's dad. Noah's dad died about five years before the flood. And guess how old Noah's dad was? He was 777. So the anomaly, the guy that was the outlier from the flood, I, I believe it was a warning to the entire world that what Noah was doing when he was building the ark, it was God's instructions because they kept track of how old they were and they kept track of numbers. Remember the Lamech on Cain's side, what he said? He said, if God's going to avenge Cain sevenfold, then surely he'll avenge me 70 and sevenfold. What he did was uh, the Lamech, the evil Lamech, there was two Lamechs. The, the Lamech on Cain's side said uh, uh, he killed uh, a man, or uh, I'm not sure if it was one man or, or two, a young man and a man to his hurt. I forget what it was. But basically he told his two wives that if God's going to avenge Cain sevenfold, then he'll avenge me 77fold. He added a seven, a rep digit. So what did God do? God knew they would understand. And as a warning, he had Noah's father and die at 777. So God's showing his true vengeance, what's going to happen with the entire world. Because Lamech prophesied of Noah, saying that he would bring, and, and Noah's building this ark. I mean, people got to be able to see that he's building an ark. And it says that he was a preacher of righteousness in the New Testament. So people knew what he was preaching. The end of the world is nigh. And then God has his father died at the age of 777 when everybody else was in the 900s. Okay, sorry for the tangent. Um, I'll go back to the presentation now. You don't have to do that in the presentation, but it's very interesting. So here's the proof of that. 550, or 1,554 equals 777 plus 777. So not only do we have Jesus, 70 times 7 times in odd and even books, we have Jesus plus Christ showing up 777 plus 777 times in the entire Bible. Just by accident. How? 
the most printed Bible in history, reaching the most people in history, is it has this. This is how the Bible ended up in its complete form. Forget about the originals because God knows all things. He knew his Bible would end up like this. So did it end up like this by his sovereign will, by his omnipotence? Or was it just an accident that his, the most important person in the Bible, so perfectly ended up in this shape? Okay, the great thing about all this is that it's factual, it's mathematical. There's nothing we can do about it to change it. It's there. We don't have to, to interpret it differently or try to, I mean, it, it exists. So what are you going to do with the facts that exist? Your only choices are uh, God inspired this or it was a coincidence or men conspired it, which is not possible because we're dealing with texts that are thousands of years old being translated. It's just not possible. So if there is any hint of doubt left over, that's why we have the rest of the presentation. So when you add Jesus and Christ to Moses, now Moses, if you're familiar with the Bible, represents the Old Testament. Jesus represents the New Testament. John 1.17 says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So, Jesus plus Christ plus Moses in the King James Bible shows up 2,401 times in the verse text. 2,401 equals 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. And here's a, a King James Bible that was printed in the 1600s. I think it was 1645. In fact, if, yeah, it was 1645. Because if you go to this link here, it'll take you directly to Google Books, where you can look at the, the whole Bible itself with this title page. But here's the top of the title page. I noticed they have uh, the law was given by Moses on the left side, representing the Old Testament. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ on the right side, representing the New Testament. So just historically, that verse has been used. So we have Moses, Jesus, and Christ showing up seven times, seven times, seven times, seven times in the Bible. And what's really interesting is that the exact middle mention out of those 2,401 mentions, which would be 1,201, there would be 1,200 mentions on one side and 1,200 mentions, mentions on the other side. The middle mention is Moses right here in this verse. John 1 17. This is the only verse to mention Moses and Jesus and Christ. And it just so happens, representing the, the Old and New Testament, the middle mention shows up in the middle of those seven times seven times seven times seven mentions. Which is completely just mind blowing. Okay, so here's the proof. <clears throat> the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified how many times? Seven. Not only is seven God's perfect number in the Bible, he says himself that his word, his words, not word, his words are purified seven times. Jesus plus way plus truth plus life. How many mentions in the Bible? 2,331. Now this verse is super important because it excludes Islam. It excludes it excludes any other means or any other version of Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He, it is through him. It is by Jesus that we get to the Father. There is no other way. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So 2,331 mentions. Now this is, has a little asterisk on truth because it's... We're looking at truth or truths with the apostrophe S. There are no mentions of ways with the apostrophe S or lives with the apostrophe S. So it's just being consistent with Jesus because we're including the apostrophe in the 980 count. So 2,331 equals 777 times 3, which is 777 plus 777 plus 777. There's the proof. Jesus plus God plus Son of God. How many times is Jesus, 980, plus God, pure mentions, plus Son of God, pure mentions, 
show up in the King James Bible. This one's interesting because God is in the phrase Son of God. So they're kind of connected, right? Jesus is the Son of God. So we're basically, we're counting God here, but we're also counting the word Son. Uh, in, for basically, we're counting, whenever that phrase shows up, we're counting Son of God as a mention. But we're also kind of counting all mentions of God. So when we combine all those words together, which are pretty natural, you get 5,439 mentions. So as you can see, Jesus on the right side with 980, God 4,412, and Son of God 47. Gives you a total of 777 times 7 mentions. Again, here's the screenshot proof. Again, you see Jesus with the 980 count. And you can use your calculator if you'd like to verify. 5,439 equals 777 times 7. Now, how about Jesus plus every single uppercase name of God in the Bible? So, Lord, all uppercase. Not looking at the Lord where there's capital, capital L or lowercase l or lowercase o-r-d. It has to be every single letter capitalized. Lord, God, Jehovah, I am, Jah, Branch, King. Those are every single uppercase mention of God and Jesus in the entire Bible. That's every single variation. There are no others. When you look at all of them, all of them combined with the 980 count of Jesus, you get 7,777 mentions. So this one is looking at the, the singular, so <clears throat> it's not including Lord's possessive, um, but it is uh, in itself miraculous. If uh, Interestingly, 6,790 for all mentions of God uppercase, that equals 970 times 7. 970 is how many times Jesus showed up. If you remember that first chart we showed you with the raw mentions in purple and the pure mentions in white, we had 980 and 970. So 970 mentions of Jesus without the apostrophe, and then all uppercase mentions of God is 970 times 7. Okay, so either way you go. I mean, you can see how this is something that is just, how is this happening? 7,777 mentions of Jesus and all uppercase God and all uppercase Jesus in the Bible. Here's the screenshot proof. As you can see again, with the 980 mentions of Jesus. So how many times does Jesus open the Bible? It depends on how you look at it. If you look at his name by itself, you get 70 times 7 mentions in every other book matching the equation that he spoke out of his own mouth. If you look at Jesus plus Christ, you get 777 times two mentions, or an average of 777 mentions for Jesus or Christ. If you look at Jesus Christ and Moses, you get 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 mentions. If you look at Jesus plus way plus truth plus life, you get 2,331 mentions, or 777 times 3. If you look at Jesus plus God plus Son of God, you get 777 times 7 mentions. And if you look up Jesus plus all uppercase variations of God, 7,777 mentions. All of this happens in one book. And the critics do not say this. The critics do not bring up the name of Jesus, in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This is the foundation for realizing the King James Bible is perfect numerically speaking. This shows you that God was not messing around when he inspired the Bible. He had everything, everything spoken and written originally in a way so that it would end up in this form. Jesus, God, he knows the hearts of every man. He knows the thoughts that come into your mind, every one of them. He knows not just your thoughts and and your friend's thoughts, and your pastor's thoughts, and your neighbor's thoughts. He knows the thoughts of everybody in China, and Russia, and Africa, and in Brazil, and Mexico. He knows everybody's thoughts, not just in this generation, but in the 1950s, and the 1900s, and the 1800s, and the 1700s. He knows all of it. And he knew that his word would be passed down through the generations, and end up here where it's in this Bible that is in a language that covers the whole world. It's printed the most times. It's the most representative of his true word. That's what we're dealing with. The most printed book in history. 
Today we glimpsed less than 1% of the perfection that has been discovered so far. What we just saw, it pales in comparison. In, 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 let's just say, not in comparison, because those are some of the really strong ones. But in terms of volume, there are so many other confirmations that this is actually all perfectly of the mind of God. For example, in the Gospels, if you look at all the mentions of Jesus, now in the entire Bible, this is how many times Jesus shows up. Seven times seven plus seven times seven times. But just in the Gospels, if you look at all mentions of Jesus combined with all the pure mentions of Father and Son, with or without the apostrophe, apostrophe S, you're getting the exact same count in the Gospels. Jesus plus Father plus Son in the Gospels gives you 980 mentions. 70 times 7 plus 7 times 7. But it goes further. When you just look at Father and Son, singular, just kind of how we looked at all uppercase mentions of Lord and God, singular, without the possessive mentions. If you look at just Father and Son, singular, in the Gospels you get 7 times 7 times 7 mentions. And in the entire Bible, 70 times 7 mentions. Those are pure. Those are referring to God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There are so many more. All of them are on kjvcode.com, all the big ones at least. Uh, and there's some some of the some weak ones on there we have to get rid of, but uh, we'll be adding um, new ones on there uh, over time, the, the really strong ones we want to add. We want to get it to the point where um, we're not adding anything unless it's just mind-blowing, mind-blowing, <laughs> times three. All these patterns are real and unique to the King James Version, the most used and fruit-bearing Bible in history. So how many words are in the Bible? So you've told me how many times Jesus is mentioned in the Bible. How many words are in the Bible? So this is where the Elton Anomaly comes in. If you're familiar with my channel, you probably already know about this, but in terms of presenting this to your friend or in public speaking settings, this is the Elton Anomaly. This is the file where we have all of the words counted. And it's not only counting the words, it's counting the numbers. And it's counting the book titles, uh, all the words in the book titles. So it's giving us this, this count for the Bible that we never had before. And it was only discovered in 2023, so very few people know about this. In the entire Bible, the total count for, all, for basically the structure of the Bible, the words in, in, in the text, and the verse numbers, and the chapter numbers, and the book titles, and the cover of the Bible, Holy Bible, King James Version. In the entire Bible, it gives you this count of 823,543, which again is detailed in, in, it's in great detail, which edition of the King James Bible? Well, it's the, the, the edition that's printed today, the one that it's settled into. That's all in the Elton Anomaly video on my channel. But for the sake, for the sake of briefly going over it, 823,543, equals seven times 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 seven. I have to follow along with my eyes to make sure I'm getting all the sevens. So how many sevens is that? Seven. Seven to the seventh power gives you the King James Bible. That gives you everything you need to print a King James Bible in the hierarchy of importance. So. Technically, you could say, okay, so you're not including page numbers or you're not including um, uh, title pages, um, the appendix. The... Those things are going to vary from Bible to Bible depending on the printer. But all of this is not going to change. This is what you need to print a Bible. And these are the, this is the most important, this is the substance of the Bible. The words in the verse text. The words in the book titles. And by the way, the book titles, as I detail in my more elaborate video, are the same book titles used in the King James Bible in all of history. Uh, the total chapters, total verses, words and psalm headings, Psalm 119 inscriptions, and the words in the colophones, which are the postscripts at the end of Paul's epistles. All of those make up the King James Bible. Those are the most important things that make up the King James Bible because that's what identifies the King James Bible as the King James Bible. That's what it is. And you get a total of seven to the seventh power when you add all of it together.
you can say that it's we're just picking and choosing, but that's that's what it is. That's what we get. That's the result we get. And by the way, it's called the Elton anomaly because a brother whose first name is Elton, he wants to remain anonymous. Otherwise, he's from South Africa. He discovered this, and I named it after him. But I was able to verify this by counting with my wife. We verified with a text file on the computer to just make sure that this this count actually matches a printed Bible. We want to make sure the digital uh, file that we have is giving a true count. So we took every 100 words and we counted every single word of the Bible in a printed Bible, comparing it with every 100 words in the digital file. And it was true. 100% came out to be 823,543. Okay. Um, again, I go into the specifics of that in the Elton Anomaly video. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. This verse is talking about the word of God. Psalm 119 is all about the word of God. And this verse here, verse 96, says, I have seen an end of all perfection. Now, if you're not familiar with Psalms, a lot of it is prophecy. Jesus will speak directly through Psalms in first person out of nowhere, like Psalm 40, verse 7. And that's quoted in Hebrews 10, verse 7. Like, out of nowhere, you'll see prophecy in Psalms. It's all over. I mean, in the Bible, like, prophecy and singing and songs and music is often correlated. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandments, I am 100%, <laughs> I'm 100% sure we have seen an end of all perfection in the King James Bible, in the final word of God for our generation before Jesus Christ returns. So what I emphasize to every lost person, every sinner watching this, every lost sinner, I, I mean, we're all sinners. Paul said, I am, I am chief. Um, the numbers cannot save you from your sins. All these patterns, this perfection doesn't do the saving. It doesn't, it's not, it's not going to help you be saved from your sins that you have committed against a holy and just God who will see justice done. Don't you want to serve a God who is just? The numbers cannot save you from your guilt, from your offenses that you have committed against God. But they point you to the person who can. Because Jesus Christ, he came 2,000 years ago, the author of all this information, gave himself so that you individually could have eternal life. So he, without sin, he being just, gave himself for you, the unjust, even though he didn't have to, so that you could have his righteousness, so that you could come before the Lord, washed in his blood, in his perfection, and God no longer sees any of your sins. They're all washed away. And you walk in him and new life. You are born again when you come to the Son of God, trusting in him and asking him to save you. And he will save you with the Holy Ghost entering into you. That's something that I did before I knew any of this existed. By myself, in a bedroom. It wasn't in a church. It wasn't with any, uh, any anybody leading me. It was just me by myself. After I had watched a, a five-minute clip on YouTube, a little preaching sermon clip it made me realize i am a sinner going to hell i went to the other room by myself i fell to my knees asked jesus himself heart to heart please save me from my sins it felt like it literally this is going to probably vary from, from each person for me it literally felt like chains fell off of my soul Tears started streaming down of joy and peace like I've never felt before. This is back in 2014. And if that has not happened to you, if, if you have not come to Jesus Christ, if he is not your Savior, if you're trusting in your own hands, your own goodness, that's the problem. You're establishing your own righteousness, but you're not humbling yourself before the righteous one, the one who can make you righteous before God. You see, if, if you think it's all about good works, where is the line drawn? 
Like, who is good and who is bad? Where do we draw the line? That's not going to happen. All have come short of the glory of God, according to the Bible, according to the Lord. And now that you know that this, His word is true, you can start reading these things and realizing, wait a second, what am I going to do? Because it says that all have come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to the Father. So come to him if you have not. He is the one who can save you, not the numbers. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the numbers cannot sanctify your life. They cannot make you a better Christian. They cannot make you read the Bible every day. They simply show you the, the book, the word that can Jesus says, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. That is what we're supposed to be sanctified by his word. That's how we grow in him. That's how he abides in us and we abide in him. When you read his Bible, when you pray, the numbers will not sanctify you. Having a knowledge that the Bible is perfect doesn't make you a better Christian. It simply points you to the, to the word of God, giving you the path of what, what, what is your next step? Your next step opening the Bible and reading. Lord, guide me, teach me. What will you have me to do? <clears throat> Coming before the feet of Jesus and learning. All right, so I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That is, that is a verse that is, when it says me at the end of it, it's not saying us as the church. It's not saying uh, anything corporate. This is an individual thing that Jesus gave himself for you as an individual person. Everything. Who he, he gave himself, the Son of God. Nobody can, I cannot wrap my head around that. Nobody can wrap their head around who this, I mean, he inhabits eternity. He is from everlasting all, all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in him. He gave himself for you. It's his love. It's his, his love for us. That's why we love him. And that's what brings us to our knees in repentance and thankfulness and in his grace. That's who we approach unto. So... The perfect Bible is given to us by a perfect author, and that perfect author, that perfect author loves us. He loves us individually, and he loves us as a church, and he cares for us. So I hope that helps you. I know there's different people in different walks of life watching this, different parts of the world, different struggles. Just know that Jesus Christ, he's watching over you, and he does care for you. You can call upon him and you might be going through a wilderness. And that's okay because God takes his children through the wilderness. And it's for a reason. But you can know and trust in him. And instead of complaining and murmuring, you can simply look at his word and say, Thank you, Lord. I have your word. That's all I need. I can trust every word. Okay, guys. That's it. At the end of the presentation, there's a QR code. People can scan it. It'll take them to the patterns on kjvcode.com, which I can show you real quick. It'll take you to this link. So kjvcode.de slash Jesus name. kjvcode.de slash Jesus name. Takes you to the list of all the patterns presented in the presentation. So there's not really too many of them. But what you can do is switch it to grid view right here and get a better view. Uh, you can open them individually by clicking on the title of it or the card. But if you want to just preview it real quick, the picture, you can click on the picture itself. It'll let you preview that uh, and then give you a bar at the bottom to view the pattern. So if I want to open this in a new tab, I'll right click it, open that in a new tab. So I can actually see the pattern where it has more screenshots and it has uh, more of an explanation behind it. So if I go back up here, we can go through the different screenshots. And it has downloads available, search files. Uh, it has a black and white pattern printout for most of these that are presented. 
So if you're to download that, you could print that out. Let me just show you what that looks like. You can print that out and pass it out, have it on you, uh, hang it up somewhere, whatever you want to do with it. Um, I think most of these have a type of pattern printout attached to them. So maybe not most of them. I'm not sure about these, but most of the ones with Jesus do. Um, so anyways, I hope that is a, a blessing to you. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to use any of this. All of my stuff is free to use. If you have permission. Uh, I don't look at it as my stuff. I look at it as, as I'm doing this for the Lord. It belongs to his, it belongs to him. It belongs to his church. Uh, and freely take it and use it however you would like. Um, so anyways, that's all I got. Uh, I'll be posting the macro patterns video in the next, um, I don't know. We'll see when I post that. I'm not sure when I'm posting it. Next couple days, maybe even today. Um, so I hope this uh, has been a blessing to you. And um, thank you for every, Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the blessings. And we'll look forward to seeing you in those videos. All right, take care. God bless.